Good morning, everyone. JJ at Microwave Futures here. Um, I'm going to do this video to help people figure out how to see things like inventory using a candlestick chart. And this is really the basics of how, you know, markets work. Markets move because of inventory and order flow. So when you have inventory in a market, it's like what you're saying is, you know, people will ask me what inventory is. This, that, that word is used a lot in trading. Inventory for us means time traded and volume traded over a certain level or under a certain level. So in this instance, we're going back till March, April of this year. You can see that between 4136, you know, and this 4500 level, you could see that there were people that were long in this market. Now, a lot of people say, well, what about the shorts? Don't worry about the shorts for now. Generally, markets operate on the fact that people are long most of the time. That's, that's how it works. So if people had bought into this move, as soon as it came out and took out that swing low right there, a lot of the longer term momentum traders would sell that volume gets sold off and then you can see it was accumulated here in a short time frame taken back up to sell and that as soon as we got over 4194 you can see that the market sold off and it came down to this area that we call the cost basis right we went down looked underneath 3700 came back up went up to 3955 came back down back up back down this chopping back and forth this is on a daily chart, so the time frame is days. Now that chopping back and forth happens in markets in all time frames. Sometimes from monthly or weekly time frames all the way down to a 30 second time frame, right? And being able to identify chop like that or what we call balance, that really helps you take trades back and forth at the edges of that, right? So you wait till it looks below, comes back up, you go long. When it looks above, comes back down, you go short, right? Those are the safest trades for us right now. Yeah, I'm doing this video with some of the folks in my room are on. It's a strange hour of the morning, but I got inspired. So what we're doing is we're trying to show you folks how the accumulation of inventory after a market sells off, this inventory now is a cost basis for the large size traders. Those that act like wholesalers and those who are wholesalers. What does it mean to act like a wholesaler? Well, it means that you're trading with maybe a billion dollars and you have 10% of that for speculative ventures and you use that 10%, right? You use that $100 million, you leverage that and you trade in short time frames, right? And this is very, very financially rewarding if you know what you're doing and you're trading that kind of size. Because what these people will do is they will buy 10, 15, 20,000 contracts and then as the market goes up, they will sell into the buying, right? Then the larger traders will, will have cost basis here, multiple participants, not just one or two. And then when the market, you, when they see that the selling at this 39.55 level has stopped, they will stop selling, cut supply. The market will naturally move higher, right? You don't have to recognize. This is the beautiful part about trading. You don't have to recognize these big players. All you need to do is know what they're doing and how to see it. So when you see this accumulation, you know that these are the folks that are in there buying the low, selling the high, buying the low, selling the high until these people get tired of selling. And then you'll notice that the market gets above 39.55 and sticks. When it comes back down to 35.55, it cannot get lower, which means that the people who control the supply or the group that controls the supply or the number thousands of traders, we all trade the same way. We're all trained in the same place. That's why these markets move as one person would be moving it. The reason is we're all, we're all trained to do the same thing for the last 300 years. There's nothing new in trading, right? Even though it's electronic and all this stuff, the business hasn't changed, right? So what they do is they accumulate a cost basis and then cut the supply. When you cut supply, guess what, Casper? It creates demand. 
if you cut supply, it creates demand, the market goes back up, and now you just gently sell into that. Now, why does the market go down? Because people are tired of buying, they run out of buyers. So the large traders who have a cost basis here sell the market down to their cost basis. Now, do you notice that this time it takes longer to clean the market up to get it back above 39.55? The reason is now you have two areas of trapped long traders. You have two areas of supply. So it takes longer to clean it out and the move is not as strong, right? Yes, yeah, how do they cut off supply? If you have 5,000 contracts that you own under 39.55, you're just not a big seller until 40.54. 40, 40, this is the art of selling size. It is why markets move. It's the art of moving inventory. Just like if you were selling, you know, anything, aviation supplies, right? You have an inventory of those that you bought at a cheap price and you want to sell to the airline at a profit, right? Captain Casper is an, a pilot. So it's just like any other business, except this time we're selling futures contracts or it could be a stock, right? So then the market comes back down, it flushes and rebounds, right? This big flush down under 36.30, that traps a lot of people short because people follow price. We use those shorts when they come back and cover to push up, come back down. You can't break a level. The market goes right back up. And then we've been distributing over, um, you know, 39.83 now for a couple of weeks. And now we're going to sell the market back down to the cost basis. So that's simply what's going on here, right? That's a larger time frame explanation of how trapped inventory moves markets and then what we can do is we can use the same principle on a shorter time frame chart right so on a shorter time frame chart all we need to see let's take a look at a uh, a one minute chart right you can see that here there was inventory between 39 3880 and 3888 those people got trapped. It sold off under 38.80, right? And then take it back up to sell. So then what I did was I drew a little box using that those lows and this high to see if that's a, a, an area of balance. Notice now how in this chop zone, as the market went up to 92 and came back, it kind of stopped here at 88. Now what I'm going to be watching for, right, using this theory right, which is not really a theory, it's the actual business. If it holds 88, we'll go up to VWAP. If this thing gets back down under 88, you will be short under 88, and then you can take off some at 84, some at 80, and if it doesn't break 80, cover your short. This is the safest way to trade now for us because in markets that are, you know, are very volatile, you're gonna miss sometimes that big move down. You'll miss this, right? And a lot of people will chase this and get chopped up. The trick to this is wait till it falls apart, then look for a balance zone, an area where that back and forth trade is going to happen just like this. Just as this is this on a smaller time frame. Here it's on a five minute, here it's on a one minute, here it's on a daily. Make sense? Anybody have any questions? Everybody get that? Understood? Perfect. And this way, you could use charts to see inventory, right? Patterns and everything are great. I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying anything against patterns, right? And pattern analysis and all that. But it kind of helps to know what's going on because this chart is actually a sales chart. There's nothing, there's nothing really spectacular about this chart. It is a sales chart. And what it is, is these charts, what they're doing is they're showing where people are buying and where they're selling, right? Hey, Corey. So as this thing comes down, what you do now is you just trade the box, right? Just trade the box, right?
right? So in that, you could just see the inventory. This keeps your life very simple. Take shorts from 92 down, or in this case, if we break 88, take, take that break down, right? Use the middle of the box to cover. If it can't break the middle of the box, take your money and run. Hit and run trading from now till the end of the year, folks. Hopefully this helps. I'm going to stop recording and a uh, little advertising here. Come see us at microefutures.com. And we'd like to see you. Bye for now.